I'm Shelly Turner with the BuildRaw team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get to the new workflow feature inside of Mailing Boss. So as you can see, I'm logged into the dashboard and I'm going to go to Mailing Boss right here on the left hand side. And then right here where it says Welcome to Mailing Boss, I can click this and go right into Mailing Boss. And then from here, I can go to the top menu and click Workflow. And now I'm in the workflow area and I can start working on creating a new workflow. So that's how to get to the workflow area in Mailing Boss in BuilderAll. I'm Shelly Turner with the BuilderAll team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new workflow inside of Mailing Boss and create your first subscriber list inside of the workflow system. So I'm inside of Mailing Boss and I'm going to go to the top menu and I'm going to click Workflow. And this is my workflow dashboard. The first thing I need to do is name my new workflow. And once I name it, then I can start building my workflow. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually pull in and create a new subscriber list. We have a few options here. We've got list, email campaign, or email sequence. We're going to go ahead and choose list. What I'm going to do is click and drag it over to the workflow area. And you'll see that now I have a little box that appears. And then I can just let go of my mouse and drop it. And it drops it right on the workflow area. So that is a subscriber list that I've just added to the workflow. But now I have to configure it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this little edit icon here in the center of the box. And from here, I can choose a list that already exists, or I can create a new list. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new list. And I'm going to think of a name for my list. And then once I name it, I'm going to go ahead and copy that name into the display name and into the description. Now you can change any of that information if you want to. Then I need to choose if it's a single opt-in or a double opt-in. Just for ease of training, I'm going to go ahead and choose a single opt-in, but always remember that a double opt-in will create a much better list for you because they have to do two actions to be able to be confirmed on your list, so you'll have a much better uh, responsive list. Once I've got that screen configured, I'll go ahead and click Create. And now my list is ready to go. I've got a couple options here. I can go in and update my list, meaning I can make some changes. I can edit the list pages and the email contents. These are the stock pages and stock emails that come with your subscriber list. And then I can also create and edit list fields. So if you've got the uh, email field and you want to add the first name field, you can click the edit field and you can add different fields to your subscriber list. And if you're all done, you can just click OK. And now we've got a new subscriber list in this workflow. And before I leave, I want to make sure that I click Save so everything's saved on my workflow so I can come back to this later and work on it again. So that's how you add your new subscriber list to the workflow dashboard inside of Mailing Boss. I'm Shelly Turner with the BuilderAll team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with Mailing Boss workflows and add an email sequence to your subscriber list. So as you can see, I'm logged into Mailing Boss and I'm going to go up to the top and choose Workflow. And then on this screen, I'm going to click my existing workflows and I've got several listed. I'm going to find the one that I want to work in and just click it. And there's the subscriber list. And now I want to go ahead and add an email sequence to it. So to do that, all I need to do is click this green arrow right here. When I click it, it comes up with several options. I can choose to unsubscribe user. I can choose to insert a tag value. I can create an email campaign, which is a single email. Or I can create an email sequence. I'm going to go ahead and choose email sequence, so I'm going to click that. And now I need to either choose a sequence that already exists, or I can create a new email sequence. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new one. So I'm going to click create a new sequence. So I've named my email sequence and it shows me what list it's assigned to. Now I can choose who this email sequence gets sent to. I can send it to future subscribers only 
or I can send it to everybody that exists in the list now and future subscribers. I'm going to go ahead and choose future subscribers only. And then it asks me how many messages do I want. So in this sequence, do I want a single message or do I want five messages? Let's go ahead and split the difference and we'll do three. And then I'm going to click create. So what it does in the background is it creates three email campaigns for me in this sequence. And then it gives me some options. I can choose to change the email information or filter tags. I can do email setup, email template, or I can activate emails. I'm just going to click OK for now. We're going to take a look at what we've got. Remember, I've got my subscriber list. Then I created an email sequence. And in that email sequence, I've got three email campaigns. So I've now created my email sequence, and I can start configuring. So the first thing I want to do is actually edit the emails. So I'm going to go into this first one, and to edit, I need, need to click the Edit icon. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to go to Email Setup. And now I'm in the edit mode of the email. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that this information on this page is correct. I want the from name, the from email, the reply to email. This where it says to name is going to be a tag and that tag is the email tag. And then the subject. So this one is the welcome message. So I'm going to click save and next. And now I can go in and edit this template. And I'm going to go ahead and just put a welcome message. So you can see you can make some changes. And then once you make your changes to your email, remembering that you can pull these elements from the left side into the email to dress it up. And down at the bottom, you can work on the plain text version of your email. Also remember that you can test your email by sending yourself a copy by using this button right here that says Test Template. After you've configured it the way you want it, you just click Save and Next. And now it asks, when do you want to send your email? So on the autoresponder event, I can choose to activate this email right after they subscribe or after they open a different email. Because this is the first email, it's going to be activated after they subscribe. Now it says autoresponder time value. I'm going to set this to zero. And then on the time unit, I'm going to set it to day. And what that means is it's going to immediately send out. So as soon as they subscribe, they're going to get sent this message. And then I have the option to send to future subscribers only or send to current and future. I'm going to go ahead and send to future subscribers only. And then down here, I want to make sure that all of this is correct, including the campaign name, the list or segment that this campaign is attached to, the from name, the reply to email address, the to name, which is going to be a tag that you can't change, the subject, the date that I added this, the last date that I updated, and then you can choose to get a spam score if you want to on this email. Once everything is set the way you want it, you can choose to either save and activate or activate later. I'm going to go ahead and choose save and activate. When you choose activate, that means that this email is activated and if someone subscribes, it will send out to them. If you choose activate later, that means the email won't go out to them yet and you'll have to go in and activate it at a later time to make it send out to your subscribers. And now that I've set up everything in the email, I need to make sure that the timing is correct. So I'm going to click the little timer and I've got it to send to future subscribers. I've got the status as active. It's activated at the time that I set this up. And the autoresponder event is set to after they subscribe on zero days. So I'm going to click OK. So now everything is set up. I've edited the email. I've edited the timer. It's showing me that it is set up to go on zero days. I need to do the same thing to the second email and the third email. So I need to edit the email and then edit the timer. I need to do both of those things. And then once those things are done, I just click Save. And then your emails are actually set up and ready to go. So the next time a person subscribes to your list, it will activate this email sequence. And they'll start sending out according to the time that you told them to send. So that's how you set up an email sequence inside your workflow dashboard in Mailing Boss.
I'm Shelly Turner with the Builder All Team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to tag someone that gets added to your subscriber list, and then you can use that tag later to identify people that have been added to that list. So let's go ahead and jump into the workflow area. That's how, where I'm going to show you how to do this. So I'm logged into Mailing Boss, and I'm going to go into Workflow, and I'm going to click on Workflows and find the workflow that I'm working in. I'm going to click it and that opens up my workflow. Now here's my list right here and I want them tagged as soon as they are added to this list. So to do that I just need to click this green arrow and when I click the green arrow I have several different uh, options. I can choose to unsubscribe a user from another list if they're added to this list. I can insert a tag which I'll show you how to do. Um, if they're added to this list I can uh, trigger an email campaign which is a single email. If they're added to this list, I can trigger an email sequence. Uh, and I've already actually put an email sequence on here. But let's go ahead and add a tag to any person that is added to this list. So I'm going to click that green arrow, and I'm going to click Insert Tag Value. And I can choose a tag that already exists, or I can add a new tag. So I'm going to add a new tag, and I'm going to call it TR1. And then I'm going to click OK. And now I can see that I've got a new little box on here, and I can kind of drag it out of the way. And let me move the email sequence over a little bit so that you guys can see exactly the flow. That's what's great about this workflow program is you can see how everything flows. And don't forget that every time you make a change to your workflow, you need to make sure that you're clicking the Save button so all of the changes that you've made are saved to this workflow. So now I've got it set up so people subscribe to this list and as soon as they subscribe they're going to be tagged with TR1. And not only that, but they're going to be sent an email sequence and here are the three emails in that email sequence. So this is a really neat tool to graphically represent your workflows that you've set up inside of Mailing Boss. So that's how you add a tag to a subscriber list inside your workflow dashboard in Mailing Boss. I'm Shelly Turner with the Builder All Team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work in Mailing Boss workflow and how you can add a tag to an email campaign when a subscriber opens that email. So let's go ahead and log into our mailing boss and choose workflow. So at the top, and I'm going to find the workflow that I'm working in by clicking the workflow area and then choosing my workflow that I want to work in. So here's my workflow right here, and I've already tagged the list. So anybody that's added to the list is going to get a tag value of TR1. Now I want to tag an email, and the way I want to tag it is if they open the email, they get this tag. So to do that, all I need to do is click this green arrow on the exact email that I want to add this tag to. So the first email, if they open the welcome email, I want them tagged. So I'm going to click this arrow, the green arrow, and I've got several options that I can do. The green arrow means if they open the email. So if they open the email, I can move the user. If they open the email, I can copy the user if they open the email, I can change a field value. If they open the email, I can tag them. If they open this email, I can send them another email campaign. Or if they open this email and click a specific link. So there are actions I can set if they click the link. But in this video, I want to show you how to insert a tag. So if they open this email, I want to insert a tag value. So I'm going to click on that. And now I have a couple of choices. I can choose a tag that already exists, or I can add a new tag. So I'm going to put TR open as the tag value. And now I can choose how long to wait for them to open this email. I can choose a number of days, hours, or minutes. If they open this email within two days, let's select two days. So if they open this email within two days, they will get this tag. So what happens if they open it in three days? They do not get this tag because they didn't open it in the two days that I gave. 
So once you configure the information, you just click OK. And now you can see there's a tag attached to that specific email campaign. I can put a tag on each of them if I want to. If you want to edit the information in the tag, you just click the edit icon. It takes you back to that screen and you can edit again and click OK. So that's how you add tags to your email campaign in the workflow dashboard in Mailing Boss. I'm Shelly Turner with the Builderall team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work in workflow and add a subscriber list and an email sequence that already exists so you can work with it in the workflow dashboard. As you can see, I'm logged into the Mail Boss dashboard and I'm going to go to workflow at the top. And for this one, I'm going to create a new workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and name it at the top here. And now that I've got it named, I'm going to go ahead and add a list. So I'm going to click and drag and pull in a list. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on edit. And I'm going to choose a list that exists already. So I'm going to click that down arrow and I'm going to find my list that I want to work with. And once I choose my list, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now I've got my list in there and now I'm going to add my sequence that I have. So I'm going to click the green arrow and I'm going to choose email sequence. And I can choose an email sequence that exists already. So I'm going to click the down arrow and I'm going to choose that email sequence and then click load sequence emails. And now I've got the sequence added and I've got all my emails added. So now I can start working with this list and the email sequence to work on the workflow, including adding tags right here on this workflow dashboard. So that's how you add in a subscriber list and an email sequence that already exists into the workflow dashboard inside Mailing Boss. I'm Shelly Turner with the Builderall team. In this video, we're going to go over how to get someone to subscribe to one list, and when they subscribe to a second list, they'll be unsubscribed from the first list. Now, why would you want to do this? Sometimes you may have multiple lists, and you want to stop a person from getting a certain email sequence when you add them to the next list because they're going to get a different set of emails. So let's go ahead and jump in and work on our workflow and get it ready so we can set all this up. So I'm logged into Mailing Boss and I'm going to go to Workflow right here at the top. And on Workflow, I'm going to create a new workflow. And when I create the new workflow, I'm going to go ahead and pull in two lists. So I'm going to click on List and drag it over and then click on List and drag it over. So I've got two new lists and I'm going to click Save. And now from here, I'm going to go ahead and set up my list. So on the first one, I'm going to click the edit button and I'm going to create a new list and I named it test list number one. And I'll put that as the display name and the description. And then for testing purposes, I'm going to choose a single opt in that makes it a lot easier when we're testing and then create and then OK. So now I've created my list for test list number one. Now I'm going to create test list number two by clicking the little icon. And I'm going to create a new list. And I named this one test list number two. And again, we'll make it single opt in to make it easier for testing purposes and then create. So now I've got two lists that are created. And remember what we're wanting to do. We want to subscribe to the first list. And then when we subscribe to the second list, we want the first list unsubscribed. So I need to make a rule on this second list. To do that, I'm going to click the arrow. Now the arrow means. If they subscribe to this list, I want this to happen. So when I click the arrow, it tells me what all I can make happen. So if they subscribe, I can unsubscribe from another list. I can tag them. I can send them a specific email, single email, or I can send them a specific email sequence. For this video, we're going to learn how to unsubscribe a user. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And now I choose the list that I want them unsubscribed from. So I just click the down arrow and I want them unsubscribed from test list number one. So I'm going to click that and then click OK. And now it's really important to remember that you save after you're done. And now everything is saved. Let's go back over and make sure we know exactly what's happening. 
I'm going to go ahead and subscribe Batman to list number one. Then I'm going to go in and subscribe Batman again to list number two. When he gets added to list number two, he's going to be unsubscribed from list number one. What does that mean, unsubscribed? Well, he'll go in as confirmed. So he gets every single email that I have set up for test list number one. But once I change him to unsubscribe, he won't get any more emails from test list number one. If there's any email sequences attached, he won't get them. But he will start getting the emails from test list number two. So now that we've set the, this workflow up, the next step that we have to do is set it up in our website in the editor. So let's go ahead and jump into the editor and do the setup that we need to do there. So now we're in the editor and all I've done is pulled out an email form. I pulled one with the orange button and the other one with the green button. It's very simple. Nothing's attached yet. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to configure. And we're going to connect this to the mailing boss test list number one. And then I'm going to right click the second one and configure and connect it to test list number two. And in each of those lists, the only field set up is the email field, but that's all we need, so everything will work out perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Save, and Save again. And now that I've set everything up in Mailing Boss, and I've connected my forms to Mailing Boss so that the subscriber goes into the correct subscriber list, let's go ahead and go to the live website, and we will put in our addresses, our email address, and let's watch what happens. So I've hit refresh, and this is the live website, and I'm gonna start off with putting in Batman as the email. So Batman at BruceWayne.com. So we're gonna click add to list number one, and it looks like he's been added, but let's jump into Mailing Boss and make absolutely sure. So I'm back in Mailing Boss, and I'm gonna go back to the main dashboard, and I'm gonna to go to lists, and lists again, and right here is test list number one, and you can see I've got one new subscriber. So let's look at who that is. So I'm gonna click the subscriber icon. And there he is, Bruce Wayne, or Batman, and he's listed as confirmed. So if I had an email sequence attached to this list, he would start getting those emails. Now let's go back to the live website and put the same exact email address in the second opt-in form and see what happens. So I'm back at the live website and I put that same email in the second opt-in form and I'm gonna click the add to list number two. So remember, he's gonna be added to list number two, but he's gonna be unsubscribed from list number one based on the rule that we set inside workflow. So let me go ahead and click that button. And I got the confirmation that he's been added to the list. So now let's check in Mailing Boss and see exactly what happened. So I'm back in Mailing Boss and I have to refresh. This is test list number one. He's still showing as confirmed, but I have to refresh the screen to see any new information. So let me hit refresh. And now Batman is showing as unsubscribed on test list number one. So let's check test list number two and see if he subscribes. So I'm gonna go to lists and then lists again. And here's test list number two. I've got one subscriber. I'm gonna click the subscriber icon and you'll see that he is on that list and he is confirmed. So we were able to add him to list number one and then we added him to list number two. At the same time he was added to list number two, he was unsubscribed from list number one. Now remember for testing, I had both opt-in forms on the same page. You wouldn't do that. You would put those opt-in forms on different pages maybe even different, completely different websites or different funnels. Because the object is to start to learn how to manage and organize your subscribers, which means you may have to juggle some subscribers sometimes to move them or unsubscribe them from specific lists so you don't double up on emails or send very different emails uh, from two different lists. So that's how you kind of juggle subscribers inside of workflows in Mailing Boss. I'm Shelly Turner with the Builderall team. In this video, we're gonna talk about workflows and working with subscriber lists and the actions you can take on the subscriber list. So let's take a look at our list. We've got a list right here. 
and the actions we can take are on this arrow. So if I click this arrow, that means if someone subscribes to this list, do this. So let's take a look at what I can do. I'm gonna click the arrow, and if someone subscribes to this list, I can unsubscribe them from another list, I can insert a tag, I can add an email campaign to them so they get an email campaign, which is an individual email, or I can add an email sequence so that when they join the list, they get an email sequence. So those are the actions I can do based on a subscriber list inside workflows in Mailing Boss. I'm Shelly Turner with the Builderall team. In this video, I'm gonna show you what actions you can take on an email campaign. Here I am in my workflow area, and I've got a workflow showing, and right here I've got an email sequence. And I'm gonna click on an individual email campaign, that's just a single email, and I'm gonna click that green arrow. And what that green arrow means is when this person opens this email, what can I do? So I'm gonna click that green arrow to see what I can do. So if they open this email, I can move the user to a different list. If they open the email, I can also copy the user to another list. I can change a field value. Remember we set up our fields in Mailing Boss and we can set fields to have specific values, but if they open this email, I can change that value. I can insert a tag if they open the email. I can send them a different email if they open this email. And I can set up an action if they click a link inside this email. So this is what's gonna happen. If they open this email, the action that will happen is I can move the user, copy the user, change a field value, uh, add a tag value. I can send them a different email or I can set an action if they click a link inside the email. Now what happens if they don't open the email? That's why I click the X, and this is the action I can set if they don't open the email. So if they do not open the email for a certain amount of time, and I can define that time, I can move the user to a different list, I can copy the user to another list, I can change a field value, I can insert a tag, or I can send them another email, a different email. So if they don't open this list, on the X, I click that to see what I can do if they do not open the email. So those are all the actions I can do on an email in workflows in Mailing Boss.